Hello again everybody and welcome back to Green Hell. My name is Will and this is An Ecologist Plays. Now last time we ended off here on this weird Stonehenge like structure where we were busy with ayahuasca. We took ayahuasca right over there. We had these in very interesting uh, drawings on the rock over here and during the hallucination we went up that path over there and we went through another spiritual passageway. Now before we head off I am just going to harvest this Molinaria leaf which gives us the Molinaria flower and some fibers. Now the fiber which is right over here, there we go, the fiber there we can use to start some fires and interestingly enough, Molinaria doesn't actually come from the Amazon. It originally comes from Southeast Asia all the way down to Australasia. So to Australia, Papua New Guinea, those areas. And that's where it's originally from, also known as palm grass. Uh, not exactly sure why palm grass, but yeah, that is what it is also called. And in the areas in which it occurs, but especially in Indonesia, it seems, the palm grass leaves, the Molinaria leaves, are used to make fake hair apparently in some tribes at least where you would take the leaf there and you would strip it ah uh, yes this is where we went uh, in our hallucination there wasn't actually a log here the rocks magically floated and we made our way up here or across here and then it happened ahead as well but as i was saying the molinaria leaf is actually uh, stripped to some extent to make these wonderful fibers and that can then be used in some cases as rope oh, there's a spider behind me uh, can be used as rope but it can also be used as fake hair very very interesting I think now fibers of plants you know in the stripping of fibers of plants is actually something I am very very interested in I'm just looking to see where this spider may be hiding in case we need to come past here again in a bit. There he is, Goliath bird eater spider in the undergrowth. Uh, let's just try and get a good look at him. Uh, there he is, coming towards us. Uh, we're just going to shoot him and take him because we've got enough space in our backpack. Now we can't make our way up this, so it means the only way we can carry on is along this pathway right or this bridge right over here now as i was saying the use of fibers uh, is a very something i'm very interested in in some cases like with the uh, lianas over here which we can make use to make rope the lianas what we are most likely using would be what is called the bast fibers the bast fibers is the inside section of the bark of the liana over here the the vine so this liana this vine is obviously creeping up all along here and be finding some useful sections over here at the bottom to use for the making of rope now let's see this is interesting almost sounded like another spider over here okay so what on earth oh hello ha 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 you can't sneak up on me mr ali Hello, Mr. Ali. He's going to shoot you in the head once and twice. So another black caiman, everybody. Well, this is interesting. And there's the body of water, obviously. So black caimans are usually found next to water bodies. And this is one of the largest crocodilians in the world. And it is the largest in South America. And we really should be harvesting it. There's a capybara as well, another capybara through looking, ah, actually two of them right over there, and an armadillo. So lots of animals around here, but we have just killed the caiman over here. Let's see. Okay, now I have made some space, which means we should be able to carry some meat. I just realized I should have eaten some meat of the cooked meat that I have available as well, but oh well, we are probably going to be a little bit over encumbered and a little bit too slow as a result yeah 60 kilograms that's a lot of weight over here let's see we can probably yeah we can do without those two pieces of meat so in real life we would now really be attracting scavengers to that place over there uh, but of course we are not really in real life at the moment so there's another molinaria 
And Molinaria, the species name is Capitulata, I believe it is, which means small head. So I'm not sure what it refers to. It probably refers to the flowers over here being relatively small. But as I was saying, it originally comes from Asia and Australasia and has been introduced into many parts around the world as an ornamental plant. I just have to keep my eyes out. Just I have to keep a lookout to make sure that there aren't any pumas sneaking up on me. But the Molinaria plant here has then naturalized and actually invaded large parts of the world, including South America. And it occurs in Venezuela and Colombia, I believe, as well. And very little in Brazil, actually. Only really in the southern part and then perhaps there more towards the north. But in the majority of Brazil, it doesn't actually occur. Okay, so we have got a little bit of a log going in there. There seems to be an island over there that I would really like to get to. Might be able to do some island hopping over there to get to that side. So let's head off in that direction. Always keeping an eye out for something dangerous, either animals or humans, of course, which may also prove to be quite dangerous in this game. Uh, we have just killed a caiman. I do know there should be another caiman around here somewhere. As I was saying, caimans, the, the black caiman, being really one of the largest crocodilians in the world. And thankfully, attacks on humans are relatively rare in, in real life, although it does happen occasionally. And there are, of course, very few animals that will be able to go and eat or kill and eat the black caiman. One of the very few things capable of doing that is, in fact, the jaguar which, of course, being the third largest cat in the world and said to be the one with the strongest bite, that one is able to eat or kill and eat a fully grown, almost fully grown, black caiman. Oh, and I thankfully have armor on me because I didn't even see the nest of the wasps, the Brazilian wasps, right over there. Okay, interesting. Uh, we have by walking through a wasp nest made it onto the island okay I don't think I've actually ever walked across from that side onto this island eerie music of course is playing there seem to be some bamboo structures we'll get to it in a moment oh here we are Okay, let's just stand over here. Oh, wow. Hello. So this is a dead anaconda, which is probably the green anaconda. I'm not sure whether it's green or yellow anaconda. Oh, I'm hearing something. I'm not sure what. I, I don't like sudden sounds. Huh. Now, I know a friend of mine has been killed by, previously by a caiman that just rare or swam out of the water here and attacked him when we had a nice base built right over here so i am going to keep a lookout on the water and watch how the caiman sneaks up from behind but we also have a prawn trap right over here which is also going to be very useful to get some more food the the prawns at least now my train of thoughts has been completely derailed but oh yes the anaconda now the anacondas then would be the heaviest snake in the world not the longest. The longest snake in the world would be the reticulated python of Asia, but the green anaconda then being definitely the heaviest. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the green anaconda. You can correct me if I am wrong in that regard. I am pretty sure it's the green anaconda that's the heaviest and not the yellow anaconda. But let's have a quick look around the campsite here. So... I'm not sure why he is upset. There's just a teddy bear over there. There's a map, although this map isn't going to be that useful for us. Looking at it, here we are, obviously. That's the one shelter and the two shelters. Okay. North, east, southwest. The, the plane flew east. Okay, which means if we want to get to the airplane, which is probably a way to escape, we should be heading east. Okay, east. That direction. Okay, so that's probably where we will be heading soon when we are done here with this 
island we will probably be heading in that general direction now a bag of nuts that's going to be very useful again i have forgotten my uh, tortoise shells somewhere probably at the place we drank the ayahuasca so let's have a look around here let's see whether the red-footed tortoise is wandering around the island here perhaps doesn't seem to be the case unfortunately oh here we go oh hello you shall be called jack hello jack and goodbye jack so jack is sacrificing himself for the greater good so that we may survive giving us some meat and very importantly the tortoise shell and we are almost too heavy we are really on the border there yes 50 or 50. now this campfire here is under a tarp so we should be able to make fire here without any issues so let's use and use the fiber that we obtained from the Molinaria leaves. So instead of making fake hair, we are going to use it to start a fire. So there we go. And let's put the tortoise shell over there. And now that we've got our fire, we can also fill this coconut bidon with dirty water. And if we put that in here, that will now become clean water, which is, of course, marvelous. Okay, they were not very nice. They were polluting the rainforest, though. Of course, it seems they were probably hiding out here. I'm not sure what happened here. There seems to be a, quite a hastily put together structure. I'm sure I'll be able to find something. Something of use here. Okay, there's a fishing rod that is useful as well. I'm just going to pick that up for the recipe and drop it. Again, we don't need it. Open the bag. Bag of nuts. Okay. Notebook. Isabel, this is someone I'm pretty sure that we read about in the previous section, or at the gold mine, I believe it was. So it's a she was a nurse. The hospital turned into a hospice. So there was some kind of, well, pandemic, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure we all can relate to at this point in life. Uh, sure. Okay. So she's trying to find a cure for whatever disease. Uh, you know, happened, and it seems that she read Higgins's book. So she read the book that our character uh, wrote, and they were setting out as a party of four. It seems herself, a guy named or someone named Carlos, uh, Blanca, and Yao. And it's interesting. So it seems that there were some people approaching them, and then Carlos intimidated them. Uh, and they didn't go with him, interestingly enough. So they're trying to keep their goal a secret. Uh, okay, Blanca showed some interesting plants. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. And they were trying to go and communicate with the natives. Now, I'm pretty sure that would go well. So let's have a look here. Notebook. Uh, Yao is dead. Okay, the Yabawaka attacked us. <laughs> As I was saying, it went very well. Uh, they obviously were trying to make contact with the Yabawaka and it seems that they were they came across some of the uh, the the warrior people the the I can't recall what they are called the the splinter faction within the Yabawaka that had skulls painted on them so that didn't go too well and it seems that Yao had the map on him okay lots of bags of nuts here another bit of a notebook okay this is obviously before they got attacked they were getting close to the Yabawaka uh, and they came across a person. I was a policeman instead of someone from the cartel, as they initially thought. Okay. Uh, his wife, Sophia, and the daughter with him. Okay. Uh, the girl has a fever. Interesting. And there seem to be some kind of issues with potentially some, of, you know, being not very happy with all of this. Overall, they were making camp on this island. Now, this would be a generally a good area to make a camp it would be relatively defensible it seems they actually were also able to kill the anaconda and display it over here not sure why they were displaying it uh, but in any case now i would definitely also have chosen this as a base of operations because you basically would only have well two maybe three entrances to actually uh, guard you've got this entrance way right over here you've got one where we killed our tortoise friend over here and I'm afraid he was such a good friend, I already forgot his name. But this entranceway over here. And then you have this entranceway in the back here, where we had the wasp nest, which technically 
it is also protected to some extent because there's a wasp nest obviously so that entrance way right over there now previously natives and uh, jaguars and things like that couldn't actually cross these bridges over here these little log bridges and this was an extremely safe place you only had to really be careful of not picking up the poison dart frogs over here and you also had to previously be careful of the caiman that would come through here and that would be your only worries now as of some of the more recent updates however the natives and animals can now also cross along the log pathways over there log bridges so now this is a little bit less safe of a space now we have got nice uh, well water cooking over there unfortunately our tapir meat has also spoiled so we're just going to harvest that to get some maggots in case we ever get an infection that will help us and we're going to make tortoise meat over there and we're going to drink our tortoise soup over there brilliant now let's put some more water in here boil that so that it is clean water and then we're going to put some caiman meat in that prawn meat in that and some caiman meat in that coconut bowl over there and now we should be perfect in terms of food in terms of protein at least so now what to do what to do now i would love to stay over here this is a relatively nice place however we also do need to keep the story moving and I think in that case what we should be head doing is heading off trying to go find the air well airport basically because there obviously is a plane according to the drawing over there on this little piece of paper here there is a plane that flew west to east so if we can go there that is going to possibly be a way out so we are well, i guess here somewhere we went through this pathway over here we ha no longer have a map we may be able to find that at the airport i think so if we are over here and the plane flew in that direction we should be heading over there somewhere so i think let us just sleep a bit get rid of our insomnia and get it to a little bit more daytime and then we'll head off Okay, we have gotten rid of our insomnia. Let's just check to see there's not, nothing dangerous approaching us while we prepare. Nope, doesn't seem to be the case, thankfully. And before we head off, let's just drink the tortoise soup and remember our tortoise shell for a change. Okay, and I think that is all we needed. So I think let's head off east across the bridges over here always keeping a watchful eye out there may be something dangerous and while we are at it let us quickly check how our armor is doing oh 18 percent not very good 44 percent okay 32 and 44 okay so our left arm is potentially going to break if we are attacked by anything on the way over here let's still head east yes so we really should be keeping an eye out on anything that's trying to kill us okay east is still that direction ah right on cue there's a puma here somewhere puma con color not quite sure where it is so let's just back off in this direction there she is hello I see you so there's the puma now again as in real life if you just back away slowly it shouldn't attack if keeping your eyes on it however as soon as you turn and run you are food we don't do that because we are smart we are an ecologist we know these things uh, so we can retrieve our arrow from it and you know what might as well harvest them not sure whether it's a him or a her. Uh, pumas tend to look very similar. In most cats, there's very little sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism being when the male and female look very different. So when there's a difference in appearance based on which sex you are looking at. Now, the pumas, I'm pretty sure most cats at least, the males are generally a little bit larger than the females. So, yeah, not sure. I don't think that is actually shown in the game here. Uh, or whether that I'm not sure that is evident in the game here 
but in real life that's what would be now as i was saying if you turn and run if you for example are looking at a lion and you turn and run away from it that will the lion will see you as food well, there seems to be a pathway heading up here okay brilliant so if you come across a lion in the wild during daytime that must be said and you back away slowly while keeping eye contact you should be relatively okay keeping your, your eye on it so let's just eat the nice little oranges over there ah, another two can oh hello Ooh, almost walked right onto this little guy over here let's just take you and let's harvest the toucan because that means we can also make some more arrows now there seems to be a pathway leading in this direction which is then what we will follow um coconut just fell under the tree over there now we currently are still in the rainy season with this game which is great yeah we have survived 10 days now this game does have seasons which means that after another five days i think we will probably be heading into the dry season which is going to be less nice because uh, there's something i'm pretty sure i heard something oh there's an armadillo and a pickery okay that's fine okay sure that's right there as i was saying with the dry season it's going to be a little bit more challenging because it means we will not be having uh, as much rain as we have now, obviously. A straightforward day, that's why it's called the dry season after all. But as a result of that, we won't be able to get as much water and we won't be able to get clean as easily after harvesting something. So we are probably going to have to set up a base for about for a few days just to, well, close to a source of water, just so that we can stay alive have enough water to survive have enough water to be clean and the airport area where we are heading now is not the best place for that because there's no permanent water source close to it so we really will need to select a good spot to set up base anyway back to what i was saying about lions and other predators if you face them and back away slowly you should be relatively fine there is a story of a ranger in Oh, hello, rattlesnake. <laughs> I see you. I kill you. Sorry. In real life, I wouldn't go around killing snakes willy-nilly. However, we are leveling up our harvesting skill potentially. And we are also... We want to get rid of any potential dangerous snakes that if we were to walk along here again, we would encounter. So we don't want that. So we are just going to get rid of the rattlesnake meat by apparently balancing it on our head. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, as I was saying, there's a, it was a ranger in... And there's the, an airport, it seems. There's the windsock. Okay, anyway. As I was saying, there was a ranger in the Kalahari Transfrontier Park of Africa. Way back when it was still called the Kalahari uh, Himsbok Park. Uh, that actually... The, well, that was before the, the whole reserve was actually fenced off. And occasionally the lions would actually break out and terrorize the uh, pastoralists or the... the people with the with the livestock around in the area and then the rangers had to go and chase them back to the park and at one point they were tracking this big old male that had broken out and after a while they came across the 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 bushes that the lion was hiding in and this lion came charging at the head ranger that was doing the chasing back in the day and it uh, charged right at him and he, he held his ground and as the lion stopped in front of him the spit from his mouth actually just well basically landed on the guy's pants so he was that close and the guy just stood there looking at him and he took his hat off his head and he threw it in the lion's face and he said you bugger you thought i was going to get a fright now if that guy doesn't have balls the size of well this hut i don't know what uh, but yeah, so that's just, you know, back in the day, guys had to do that and occasionally had, came across lions and had a bit of a nice interaction. Well, I would say nice interaction, but had interactions like that with him. Okay, so we've got a rusty axe over here. I think that's going to be an upgrade of our obsidian axe. So we're going to take it, leave our obsidian axe over here. No, we're not because the rusty axe is heavier than ours. Okay, let's just leave that. 
Now, what else have we got over here? So we've got a radio. Oh, no signal. And it doesn't have signal, so we need to somehow fix that. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, fix the radio signal. Okay, call for help from the radio or airstrip radio and fix the radio. Okay, wonderful. I'm sure we can do that. There are some funny sounds that I am also hearing. I'm not sure what I'm hearing, but in any case, so the radio, the cord goes along over here, into, or underneath this box over here, goes along here, okay, and into this hut. So I'm pretty sure if we go in this direction, we should be able to find something. We require a key. Okay, we don't have a key. Interesting, okay. Oh, that's just a peccary. So we need to find a key to go in there. Okay, brilliant. Now, in this hut over here, if you look on this, this little one here, do you want to play with a snowman? There's actually an achievement in for Green Hell that is called Do You Want to Play with a Snowman? And I believe it references, obviously, uh, Frozen from Disney with Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Uh, but in any case, if you look at all three snowman packages, you then get the achievement. One is over here in that hut over there. One is also the, at the cartel. And one is in a cave close to the cartel. Well, let's see. There seems to be... Ah, there we go. There's a broken wire over here. And we're just going to put it together. Okay. All right. That should the, do it. The antenna over there it seems to was in... It seems it was intentionally cut. Not sure why someone would do that, but anyway, that seems to have been cut. And now we fixed it, so we should be able to call for help. We're still looking for a key. I'm probably just blind and missed it, uh, but let's have a look. See if we can find it around here somewhere. There's a bed, obviously, a safe place. A bag. Okay, let's see. Let's use the radio once more. Hello, can anyone hear me? I need help. Anyone, come in, please. I need help. Anyone, come in, please. This is Manaus control tower. Over. <laughs> you can hear me. You can really hear me? I need help. Affirmative. Keep calm now. I can hear you. You're going to be all right. Please give us your name and position. Over. This is Jake Higgins. I'm on a makeshift airstrip in the middle of the jungle. I'm not sure where exactly. Copy it. That Jake Higgins? Again? Hmm. Okay. I know where you are. Please hold. Over. Okay. Are you alone? Over. There's a girl with me. Mia. Copy. Is there a man with you? Over. A man? No. No. There's nobody else here. Are you still there? What do I do? Copy. Just stay where you are. Over. W will someone fly over? How long shall I wait? Keep calm and stay put. Help is on the way. Over and out. Hey, what What do you mean by again? Am I in some sort of danger? I mean, what's going on? Okay. Answer, please. I beg you. Please, please answer me. I don't know what's going on. That. Okay. Interesting. Mia, you're not gonna believe this. I found an airstrip, and the radio is working. Help is on the way. <laughs> At last. That was a strange conversation, though. They asked me if there was a man here. Hmm. Any idea what all that was about? I'm just glad you're safe now. Right. And since I know how to get out of here, now I need to find you. Come home. No, no, I won't leave you behind. You have to. You have to make it. For me. 
only thing you will find here is disappointment. You don't need me anymore, Jake. It's time for me to go. Stay where you are and wait for help. No, no, Mia, talk to me. Where are you? Okay, Mia, where are you? Mia, come in. I can't just abandon you. Mia, say something. Please. Mia, come on. It's time to go. I found a way out. Please. Say something. Okay, so during our outburst there we found the key to the lock over here. Brilliant. Okay, so we now have the airstrip. We apparently called for help. The help is apparently coming on. Although the guy was asking whether there's another man with us. So, and he seems quite, I think the word is exasperated. In any case, climbing equipment, that's going to be very useful as well. What is all this? Well, it's a map, that I can tell you. Yes. Okay, so this is our first map. Moving on, this is now our second map. Okay, so C1, that's where we are going to be heading now, I believe. And then there's the island with the anaconda. That's where we were previously. So we walked through, we climbed up here, came to the airstrip, and now we need to head down a little bit southeast. South, 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 southeast. Okay. Let's look. Okay. So passengers. Higgins. Oh, that's me. Okay. Jake Higgins. So that's on A1. Vega, Smith, Sabol, Alvarez, and Dimeglio. Okay. Interesting. Some of these names... I do believe sound familiar to me. I'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure where I've where I've read about them. But in any case, so we are supposed to be on the plane. And interestingly enough, okay, I picked up the machete. We don't need the machete because we've got an axe. But interesting, it's only Jake Higgins. M Mia Higgins isn't on here, and that I think is quite disturbing. So we're not quite sure what on earth is happening over here, or what's going on. Oh, I hear a person though. Alvarez, report number eight. I've spotted a fire northwest from the Delta camp. So far, I've determined that there are around six people on the island. Okay, so that's that island. He's a child. So I'm guessing these are refugees from the city. I watched them all day. It looks like they're unaware of our presence. Hmm. Now the group I would too. To stay there. I don't think they have any useful information. So there's no need for contact. But hmm. I'll keep an eye on them. End of report. Okay. So one of the guys that's on the list there, on the passenger list at the back there, Alvarez, was spying on the group that was on the island. Interesting. Okay. To Philip Smith. Okay. That's also one of the people on the airplane. Uh, so you need to collect fauna and flora specimens. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so they are trying to find something. And this is from Omolu, which is the uh, medical group. Okay, now, I don't like the fact that there is a person singing this close to our new little camp over here, our little safe space. So we are just going to sneak around the back here and see if we can remove them. Not sure how many there are, so we're just going to sneak along carefully. Try not to make any noise. Somewhere to the left. Uh, this to me is always the scary part, especially when I'm alone in this game. Ah, there he is. Looks like there are two, at least. Okay, so we're going to take out the first one, hopefully, with a headshot, and then react to the second one. Oh, missed that one, okay. He's a spearman, though, so he's shot, okay. Doesn't seem to be a third one. Okay, are you going to come for me, sir? Yes, you are. Okay, uh, that's what happens. A very slow reload time. Okay, and struggling a bit here. 
headshot him again. He should be bleeding out as well. There we go, finally headshot. Uh, sadly, sometimes it does struggle a bit uh, to reload quickly. <laughs> Although, then again, you know, in real life, I definitely wouldn't be able to reload very quickly. So we're just going to exchange our spear for his, take his property, and retrieve our arrows from his head and his body. And it seems those were the only two tribesmen over here. So thankfully, we seem to now be... Well, we can't hear anyone at least, so I don't think there are any more. Yes, so they were just chilling over here, waiting for us. And I think... Uh, let's see, are we okay on our arms? Yes. We have got leeches. Okay, that's fine. Okay. We don't... Or do we have any wounds? Yes, we do. Okay. Sadly, we have obtained a wound because our wonderful armor broke. So, let's put on the leaf dressing. We could use the tobacco dressing, although I'd rather use that for things like serious lacerations by jaguars and things like that. Uh, normal wound, or normal wound, I would use the Molinaria leaf, the normal bandage. It may get infected. If it gets infected, we will simply use the maggots. To clean the wound. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Uh, that's also an achievement in Green Hell, incidentally, using maggots to uh, heal a wound or to, to clean a wound at least. Now we are definitely over encumbered. We are not going to be using the human meat. We are going to only be carrying big cat meat. We are seriously overcome, over encumbered. We are just going to come over here get a banana leaf. I want to, or I have to make new armor. And we need rope for that, we need a banana leaf for that, and we need three bones for that, which we now have. Was that thunder or a big cat? I don't know. Oh, peccary. Okay, that's okay. Peccary I can handle now. It's not going to attack me. Now, we are going to upgrade our armor slightly here. We are no longer going to be peasants running around with stick armor. Instead... We're going to go for bone armor, which is awesome. Okay, so we've made bone armor, and we need to get rid of our old armor and replace it. Now, bone armor is the second best armor, I believe, uh, just after metal armor. Oh, I killed the bowman. Interesting. Uh, our bow is still better condition, although I think the tribal bow is lighter than the bow we make, so let's just use the tribal bow instead. Okay, cool beans. Now we've got three more bones over there, if I can just take another liana from the ro from the tree over here. And I know we've got three bones. And if I can just craft again, we can make another bone armor. And now if we look at our armor to see which one is worst for wear, it's a 32%. 44%. Okay, we're going to replace our left-hand side or left leg. There we go. So we've got bone armor on our left-hand side and we've got stick armor on our right-hand side. Uh, we are now a little bit better for wear, I guess. Uh, let's just pick up our tortoise shell for a change. Remember to take it this time around. Okay, I'm not even sure what I was doing before this. Okay, we are at the airport. Brilliant. And we have got a relatively nice area over here. I think we should set up a small base just to make fire and do things like that. Now we've got peccaries right over there. They seem to be spawning in this area. And incidentally, in the update, in one of the updates coming in 2022, we should be able to farm some of these animals. So hold them in pens and actually farm or do animal husbandry. So that is coming in Green Hell. And that's one of the things I love about this game. There's always, they're always expanding the game. So in 2022, we are getting the third installment of the Spirits of Amazonia, uh, which is a, another, well, which is an expansion, basically, a free expansion of the game. And they're also bringing in things like tree, or, well, I would say tree forts, but tree houses. So you can actually chop down larger trees and you can build in some of these large trees 
uh, do all kinds of things. And I love the fact that they are continuously expanding this game. Now, we are just going to head down this little pathway over here. See what we can find. Always keeping an eye out. Yes, I know you are tired, Jake. Okay, maybe we should first take a nap. I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, I think let's just head off and go down this pathway. See what we find down this way. Okay. Always keeping an eye out. This area is notorious for me. Or, not to me. For having things like rattlesnakes and pumas and all kinds of jaguars as well. And tribesmen. All kinds of interesting things happening along the trail over here. So I'm just keeping an eye out. Always terrified in this game when playing alone. Less terrified when playing with friends. Uh, I think we actually need Molinaria of it. So let's harvest some of the Molinaria. Okay. Right. Now we are fine. Wonderful. Okay, it seems we have a climbing spot over here. Very, very interesting. So I think let's uh, let's first have a look on the map here. Okay, so we were there and we are right here at C1. That's perfect. That's where we wanted to go. I think let's have a quick look. See what we can find down here. There's water. Brilliant. And diving equipment, which is necessary to stay underwater for longer. And they were just polluting this entire area with all the used scuba tanks. Brilliant. So now the oxygen meter at the bottom, I almost pointed at the screen, doesn't actually get depleted. So we can carry on. I think it's indefinitely. We can stay underwater, which is marvelous because now we can explore this cavern, swim along using the or following this cable that we've got over here. Which is obviously used to mark out because cave diving is extremely dangerous. Uh, close to my hometown or my original hometown, there was an underground lake that people used to dive in, although that was closed up uh, a few, many, well, actually quite a few years ago. Not sure why, but I suspect some people went diving there when they shouldn't have been diving and died, or it was just a precautionary uh, or precaution that was being taken. So we are over here okay we've come out we've got a waterfall okay seems like another climbing spot down there and a very vast expanse over there in that general direction and i think that is where we are going next time so thanks again for joining me on this little adventure of ours. We made a little bit of progress, not too much today. But I think we are going next time, we are going to carry on with the story a little bit more. We thankfully have a map for the new area now. And we should be able to go and explore this section next time. So we seem to be over here. And if we carry down the, the climbing spot, we should be heading into the swamps. So join me next time as we go and explore the marshes of the southeast of the map and we see what we find there. Thank you again for joining. I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's and may 2022 be a marvelous year filled with adventure and just awesome things. So until next time, stay safe and I will see you soon.